Hi, I'm going to give you a quick tutorial on how to find the volume of a solid object. Now, there's two ways you can do this. The first way involves using some sort of mathematical formula if it's a regular uh, shaped object. And that means if I were to have something like, like a book here, right, I could use math to measure the length times the width times the height and then find the volume that way. You could also do it for um, any sort of sphere, cylinder, whatever. Most solid objects, though, are not so simple, all right? So I have a rock here, and this is a volcanic rock. It's a pretty cool rock. And I found this on the slopes of Mount Vesuvius on a trip to Italy uh, a few years ago. And I'm curious now what volume this rock has, so how much space this object takes up. So I can't use math to figure that out, and so I need to use a method known as water displacement. So to do that, I need to have a graduated cylinder. Now, when you get a graduated cylinder, you always want to use the smallest cylinder you can because it's going to be the most precise. However, you don't want it to be so small where the object gets stuck. So this here is a thousand milliliter graduated cylinder. And the precision, if you look at the top, it tells you the precision is uh, two, uh, 20 milliliters. So what that means is each little line goes up by an interval of 20 milliliters. Um, I've already checked in this rock is not going to get stuck, all right, it's not a problem. So this would be a good graduated cylinder to use. So what I need to do next is add some water to this graduated cylinder. And I often tell students, you know, do it about halfway or about a third of the way. You don't want too, too much because then the water overflows easily. Um, and you don't want so little where the object won't fully be submerged. So about a third, about halfway. Now, do not try to get an exact number. So oftentimes students will try and get exactly 600 milliliters or 400, a nice even number. Um, and they basically spend a lot of, you know, wasted time adding a little bit more water, dumping some out, adding some more. It's not necessary. All right, just do about half, about a third of the line. So let me get some water and we'll do the next step. All right, I'm back with the graduated cylinder. As you can tell, it's about a third of the weight filled with water. Now, when you measure the volume of the liquid, uh, you want to make sure that you get down eye level and read the bottom of that meniscus. So, when I look at this now, uh, the meniscus is in between 380 and 400 milliliters. Um, going to, it's pretty much right in the middle, so I'm going to say it's uh, estimated about 390 milliliters. So I'm going to write that down. And that's going to be my initial volume of water. Now, you need to add the solid object. Now, to do this, you want to tilt the graduate cylinder and very gently add the solid object. All right? You want it to go in very slowly so no water spills out. Very, very careful. There we go. Now, if water does spill out for you, uh, my advice would be to just start over and do it again. Because if you go through with this, you're going to get an inaccurate measurement. And remember, you always want to be as accurate and precise as possible. So as you can tell, the water level has risen. So since the rock here takes up space, it's going to displace that water when the water level rises. Just like when you go into a bathtub or a swimming pool. So now I'm going to read the volume again. And this time it's right on the line, so it's 540 milliliters. 540. So now, my again, my initial volume was 390 milliliters. Final volume was 540 milliliters. So if I find the difference between those two numbers, how much the, uh, the volume of water increased, that would be equal to the volume of the rock. And when I do that, it comes to 150 milliliters. Now, it'd be even better to call the volume 150 cubic centimeters, because typically we use cubic centimeters for solid objects and milliliters for liquids and gases. So, using this method, um, I will say 150 milliliters, 150 cubic centimeters is the volume of this rock. And this can be used again for any sort of solid objects, no matter how small or how big. All right, thanks for watching.